there's an investor tech guy called Balaji Srinivasan and, you know, got a Twitter following. He's done, an, I think, an 8R interview with Lex, a 5R interview with Sam Harris. He's one of these people that those kind of figures, for some reason, regard as like very insightful and allow to waffle endlessly. Like he's kind of a bit like, Scott Alexander, in some regard, low. Scott Alexander doesn't do audio podcasts, but, you know, he writes very, very long things, is regarded mm. as very insightful. So there's a degree of indulgence, which tends to be mm. a lot. But in Scott Alexander's case, he's writing on this blog, right? So it's perfectly yeah. fine for him to be indulgent. But Balaji seems to be indulgent in audio format. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and he gave a big talk recently about just all this stuff about a need to remove. It's like this weird politics thing, which is giving all these colors to different movements. And he wants the tech sector to rise up and like kick out all of the social justice blue people, like make an alliance with the right wing the tech sector and like kick out all of the liberals from okay. you know the tech centers it's it's a really stupid analysis um we might have to cover it at some point but yeah so that's the kind of guy he is but he made a thread about huberman you know when huberman made this very amateurish mistake about oh yeah you add up percentages <laughs> that you yeah. you've got 20 percent chance yeah. to get pregnant if you, you yeah. know, try once so after six times you're Above <laughs> at 120 <laughs> percent yeah so he he made a, a defense he made a tweet thread over 1000 words long um to argue that huberman was actually correct more correct than the experts It's a very, very long, very indulgent referencing, like, you know, these buzzwords and concepts that he has talking about Peter Thiel and the lead defector state versus network, all of this just to argue that, like, the experts are actually more wrong and Huberman is more right yeah. to make an inaccurate claim yeah. that, and what Huberman was said was, like, he added up the percentages in a cumulative way and then you know said so if you try like six times you're 120 percent likely to get mm -hmm. pregnant which you know and then you could see that something had went <laughs> wrong yeah. in the reason because you don't you don't add percentages like that right it doesn't work i don't know if you know that matt but um mm. yeah well, I, have, I have have heard that well i think it's a little bit more than self-indulgent with this kind of thing you see it also with alexandros marinos who was um brett weinstein's fanboy writing these crazy long defenses of indefensible things and there's a certain power to just creating so much gish galloping content so much stuff that that people's eyes glaze over their brains do not make all the connections and it becomes difficult to dismiss even though even if there's nothing to it just out of sheer exhaustion by the reader so th this is why i think indulgent length peppering in so much stuff into it which our gurus do they, they have these massive long monologues where you go hang on well you didn't answer the question but they've said so much that it's it's impossible to deal with so yeah i don't like it i'm not a fan he spends a big bit at the start going through the maths of the probability thing right to demonstrate his capability right just reading if you take the geometric cdf formula of one minus one minus p to the n and apply the binomial expansion to the second term you get one minus one minus n to the p plus dot 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 equals n to the p for small values blah 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 right so he's done the thing to show look i understand the maths and then yeah. he says all right the point is if you can't correct huberman on the specifics like you don't even get it and anyway the dumb answer is actually correct in most cases you know when you're dealing with small probabilities or small numbers of events uh -huh. but then goes on to talk about huberman joe rogan blah 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 and his point matt the title was huberman better than harvard man right and he, he's arguing why he starts talking about gain of function research all the 
usual yeah. like kind of buzzwords, but Huberman is a Stanford man. That's one of the things he trades on is I am from a prestigious institution. Mm. I have credentials. That's his whole presentation is I am a rigorous science based science communicator, very serious. And I'm at a real institution where we do real research and I dig into it. So he is going on, you know, prestigious institution versus independent replication, all this stuff. But it's all this smokescreen to present Rogan and Huberman and all of that, like, you know, alternative yeah. set as independent free thinkers who are actually doing better science than the yeah. more abundant institutions i see i see yeah so your main point is is that his framing of hooverman as the earthy you know man in the street wisdom is has got a better handle on on these sorts of questions than the, the the academics in the ivory tower but that's totally inconsistent with hooverman's presentation of himself so yeah and like you know it is a smokescreen isn't it he's just wrong right and it doesn't matter that yes he's only a little bit wrong if you're dealing with very small probabilities it'll take you a long time before you get to over 100 percent, and you start you start dealing with the mathematical issues there but uh yeah it is it is a smokescreen to to, to write those massive terms and to bring in a whole bunch of unrelated yeah. content as part of your diatribe and this is what balaji does in general you know he's got a good verbal fluency and a memory for various disparate facts so like a Brett Weinstein or like a Jordan Peterson, he could just weave these very long winded things that, you know, touch on all of these ideas and whatnot. But it, in essence, it's all resting on these crap foundations of yeah. like, you know, really strong ideological presuppositions and whatnot, yeah. but just littered with baubles and, yeah. and you know, yeah. big sounding words to make you think there's more there and that rhetorical technique really goes to the heart of what we're on about with decoding the gurus right because because there is there is a good tight academic intellectual style where you don't bring in unrelated content where you keep the argument terse and concise and to the point and you follow a train of argument and then there's the one that works because people use these things as signifiers that something important and profound is going on. And if you're referencing some maths and if you're referencing this is connected to that and a whole bunch of things that people associate with learning, then you can give the impression that you are a very clever person making a very clever argument here. Yes, it's a bit hazy. Yes, it's very complicated. There's so much of it. You can't keep track of it all, but you must, you just assume then, just, just assume that they've made an excellent case here i think that's the educational thing we need to get onto just remind people i mean people have been to university people know that this is not this is not the kind of thing that will get you a good mark on an assignment or is it not my it depends on the discipline it depends depend a little bit on the discipline chris um yeah. we won't get into the particular discipline no <laughs> but I, I i will also say that he attempts to address this by talking about elites versus elite defectors right wow. and yeah. and huberman Yes, Huberman is, you know, elite, but he's actually envied because of his, you know, free minded and independence and his success, his ability to create a kind of outreach that academics would just dream of. So they have to tear him down because he's, you know, not behaving according to the system. He's too good, too good for this world. And so there is always an answer, right? And it's always this incredibly self serving yeah. for your main where yeah. Balaji and the people that he likes are yes they might reference their credentials and use that to boost up but actually they are the good elites you know and as we just talked about they're renegades Matt they're heretics that's why they're criticized it's not because they're promoting like small end studies or showing that they're exaggerating the science behind various dramatic claims and whatnot. No, it's because academics are jealous of, you know, Hooverman's success. Mm. And yeah. Yeah, yeah, just... Or in the case of uh, uh, Alina Chan and the origins of COVID, you know, the, they've got something to hide, Chris. They're afraid of, of the truth. Yeah, they're going to be exposed, unmasked. Mm. And, and just to return to that topic... And related to this. So like Alina Chan, right, has a national profile. She just had a, you know, a huge piece in the New York Times. She's been published a book, right? And before the pandemic, 
she was a postdoc working in a lab, you know, which many people are, that's a thing, but nobody had heard of. And lots of people's profiles increased during the pandemic, but she doesn't have expertise in virology. On the other hand, there was a researcher posting on Twitter how, because of the demonization of Eco Health Alliance by the Republicans, various scientific projects have been canceled and defunded. And this researcher just had their, you know, career, essentially their their research career currently blown up because of this hunting, right? And they were a young career female academic researcher, and they don't get cover stories in the New York no. Times or book deals, right? And this is just the difference that like all of the people posing as, you know, the brave truth jailers are putting everything on the line and they've got nothing to gain. Actually, they do. And they've gained a lot. Just like on Substack, so many of the top like Substacks, they're mm. anti-vaxxers. They're people like Steve Kirsch and, mm-hmm. you know, Robert Malone and so on. So yes, they did gain. Yeah. They gained public yeah. profile. They gained income and they gained attention in the pandemic. Well, and in some cases, they have these alternative products, which they sell as an alternative to getting vaccinated to people that they've sold their snake oil, skepticism, paranoid conspiracism too. So they make money from those channels as well. I mean, just recently, there was this uh, anti-vax conference, say no to the WHO worldwide call for freedom with speakers like Steve Kirsch, Dr. Robert Malone, James Lindsay was there talking complete shit. And of course, Brett Weinstein and others were there. And these people are all making huge amounts of money from being anti-vaxxers. And at the same time, there are these channels that actually do debunking, fact-checking, all of this stuff. They're actually being extremely truthful, representing the, the, the scientific information as accurately as possible and dispelling a lot of these misconceptions. And my God, Chris, as you know, they make nothing. They make absolutely nothing. No, they, there is no reward <laughs> for telling the There's truth. Some- <laughs> it's so much reward for lying. There are some exceptions, like Coffeezilla is very popular, right? Okay, but, he's they, an but he's an exception. But like debunk the funk relative to the popularity of, you know, like Brett Weinstein or these kind of people. That's like night and day, right? And even if you thought that channels like debunk the funk or Susan Oliver, back to the science, right? These are people doing critical videos and whatnot. Like even if you think that they are wrong or they're misrepresenting or whatever, you know, like if you're an anti-vax person, you have to acknowledge that those channels are much less attention grabbing and popular than the channels that they're critiquing. So there are obvious financial incentives to be anti-vaccine. That's right. There there, there are no paychecks coming from the National Institutes of Health or the WHO for, you know, influencers, um, online people to promote accurate science well, they and medical information. Are. They, think, they think there are, but there's no <laughs> evidence that that's the case. It's just like maybe they'll have a conference on misinformation that people get invited to or whatever. <laughs> and that's presented as like a huge conflict of interest while the other people are raking in like, mm, you know, tens of thousands, of thousands per if month. Not millions. <laughs> yeah. 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 So, oh God, it's so depressing, but that's the way of it. 